Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Motor Gang here, and today we're going to be talking about X drives. So this is an X drive that I have right here. It's basically my 24 inch high stakes robot, but with all of the extra stuff for like scoring rings stripped off, and then like the uh, brain, battery, and radio remounted into the middle so that it has like a good center of mass. So there's a couple things about this that won't necessarily be applicable to all X drives, like this robot being insanely large. Um, I think that's a 23 long C channel right there. And then I think those are maybe like 11s going out on each side. So it's a very big robot, but that doesn't really affect the qualities of what make it an X drive. So before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. All right, so the first thing about an X drive is basically you have four wheels, or you could do like sets of wheels, but typically you're just gonna wanna do four wheels at each corner of the robot, each oriented at 45 degree angles. Um, in order to get this, since I said this was a VexU robot, we use some special 3D printed gussets right here. Um, in order to get those 45 degree shapes. We have bigger ones on the outside and then some smaller ones, or I guess these are at the front back, and then some smaller ones on the sides, right, left. Although for VRC teams, something that I've seen teams do in the past is they've used like plastic in order to cut out shapes kind of like that. However, I wouldn't recommend doing that typically as if you want to have a gusset on top and the bottom on each of these corners, that's gonna be 16 pieces of plastic, which you can't do anymore legally. I think that's R25 is now you're limited to 12 pieces of plastic, but you can still use the VEX gussets. Um, they don't completely suck. Like in order to get that outside 135 degree angle, I've used them before on X drives. I'll go ahead and kind of put a picture here of some of the VRC legal X drives that I've built. So you can see on this one, I kind of have some gussets going around on the outside and the wheels weren't super well supported here. Definitely not as well as compared to this guy, but it did still work and you could probably further refine it by if you wanted to get like get really fancy, you could probably like get a plate and like machine out with like a drill at specific points that you want to go ahead and cut through in order to get that 45 degree angle. And it is fairly important that it's 45 degrees as if it's not then as we'll kind of get to later, but your, some of your force vectors will actually start to cancel each other out and your wheels will be working against each other. Additionally, it's also fairly important to try and have your X drive in a square shape as that's gonna help you strafe more evenly. If you don't care about the strafing aspect as much, it's fine if they're a little bit opsided, but I think each of these wheels are within about uh, half an inch of each other. And I noticed absolutely no issues with it not um, performing as you would expect an X drive mathematically to do if it were perfectly lined up. So it's not like super important, but I wouldn't recommend making like um, like a rectangular drive base. Like if these, instead of being 35s or like 25s, then you would probably start to notice some issues. Just a couple of other small, not super relevant things are we do have some guy wires on it, which I do cover more in the 24 inch robot explanation video up there in the top right. So that's just kind of one of the features from the original robot that doesn't really matter to all X drives. So some of the advantages of X drives is you can kind of see here when I start the program, is in addition to the standard forwards and backwards drive movements and standard turning, X drives are also capable of moving sideways with just as much power as they do moving forwards. So that's different than like an H drive or mechanum drives, as when they go sideways, they have less power. X drives still have their full power. And in addition to that, they can also just go in like 45 degree angles and anything in between. So other than like a swerve drive, which isn't really super applicable for VRC. I know some teams have done it before. Um, X drives are definitely the most common full holonomic drive base that you're going to see teams do. And they are very versatile in terms of their movement. They're also going to be a lot more efficient when it comes to turning. Um, because as you can see from the top down view here, when I go ahead and turn, just very slowly, you can see the wheels are almost like if center of rotation is right there, the wheels are exactly perpendicular to your center of rotation. Um, and none of the wheels are going to be fighting off against each other. Very efficient when it comes to turning. And we actually found that back when this was a 12 motor X drive, if you could like get a robot inside of there and turn, you had enough torque to basically move their robot around however you wanted to. I'll put up some clips there from like Mecha Mayhem. And we did that a lot just to try and like push teams out of the corners. And it worked super, super well because X drives are extremely efficient while they're turning. Now for driving forward, I'm actually gonna to go to a different program to kind of explain how that works. So we're gonna kind of think about the X drive as like an H drive. So previously, if you were like doing an X drive, like that would be the front, that would be the back, and those would be the sides. But now I have an alternate drive program written in which that's the left, right, and then that's front and back. So basically it's, you could picture this now as being like a tank drive. So those are, that's your left side, right side, and then those are just kind of like stabilizing wheels 
And then you can also think about it as like an H drive, as in those are gonna be our strafing wheels. So if I go ahead and run this program, this one slightly differently, you can see when I move my stick forward, the drive just moves forwards and backwards. Um, whereas opposed to my first program that I was running, that would move the drive base forwards and backwards. And then turning, oh, and then the other way that I do is, that's just gonna move me right and left. That's pretty standard for holonomic drives. And now going over to the second program, you can see when I turn, this is now the front of the robot. And as you can see, when I'm driving forward, since this is like an H drive, those strafing wheels um, don't actually move. And then when I go right, left, you can actually go ahead and see that those side wheels aren't really doing anything. So this is just a different drive control scheme. You would not wanna run this um, for real as I'll kind of show you the whole advantage of doing an X drive um, and why X drives are actually faster than regular tank drives. So now to kind of talk about why X drives are faster than a regular tank drive. First of all, this is an eight motor X drive. Again, this is for VEX U, so eight motor drives are fairly common. And this is 36 to 60 on blue cartridges for 360 RPM on 3.25 inch wheels. That's definitely on the faster side. Um, as you'll see at a linear speed, that's around 61 inches per second. But for the X drive, it's actually closer to 84 inches per, 86 inches per second. Um, and the way that you can see that is I'm running that alternate X drive program in which forward, that's the front of the robot. And these are like strafing wheels. So as you can see here, I'm moving forwards and backwards. And this is moving, it's 360 RPM, 3.25. So that's moving forward and backwards at a top speed of 61 inches per second. So as you can see here, I have like a meter stick set up. And once it gets going up to speed, I'll go ahead and put the time on. Um, but it's probably traveling pretty close to 61 inches per second here. So now that we have that time, whatever that number is, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, you can see as I'm going forwards and backwards at full speed, I'm not using these strafing motors at all right now. Um, I mean, they're maybe moving a tiny bit, um, but that's just because I'm not perfectly, um, axis four isn't going to be exactly at zero when I pull it straight back. But now, as I move it straight forward, you can see I can kind of move side to side and all that's taking is the power from those sideways wheels. So I'm still moving forward with the forward being this way at the exact same speed as I was before, but now I'm adding in some extra movement sideways. So now in addition to the 61 inches per second going that way, I'm like forwards backwards, I'm also going 61 inches per second going right left. Which means that if we do some Pythagorean theorem, I'm actually traveling at like 86 inches per second in that direction, which is why when I go ahead and run the typical X-Drive program, this is what most teams run for X-Drive, um, when I go ahead and rotate this, you'll now see that I'm going much faster, whatever time that was at the top of the screen. There you can see. So hopefully that just kind of explains why X drives are faster. It's basically, you have to think of it as like um, vectors. So you have some going that way and some going that way. And again, this is why they're 90 degrees um, is important. So your wheels are 45 degrees off your drive base, so that they're 90 degrees off total. That way your vectors are perpendicular to each other and they don't cancel each other out at all. Because if you didn't run 45 degrees, then yes, you would have your vectors canceling each other out and you would get a less efficient drive base. And right now there is gonna be a little bit more friction here just cause I'm on carpet right here. And you do still have the friction of the Omni rollers going sideways. Um, that's always gonna be a factor. It's less prevalent and pretty much negligible on the VEX fields. But um, this carpet does have a bit higher friction than the VEX fields do. So now that I've kind of gone and proven that X drives are faster, um, like I said, this is running 86 inches per second with 363.25. Um, and then this is eight motor drive based. So VRC teams aren't gonna be able to really do this, especially because it's very hard to do like a speed transmission or a PTO off of an X drive. You can't like, or even ratcheting off the drive base. I've seen teams do that before for VRC. So if you do wanna run X drive for VRC, you'd probably wanna run a six motor drive or 66 watt drive base in which you have um, a full five, a full 11 watt motor on the bottom and then another 5.5 watt. So you would have 16.5 watts per pod. And for that, you would have to be running green motors, but green motor RPMs actually work fairly well for X drives. 200 on four inch wheels is a little bit on the slower side, but it's definitely still okay. And then you could also run like 333 on 3.25, which is um, 36 on the wheel and then 62 gears on the motors, which is probably what I would do if I were running a 66 watt drive base. 
However, another reason that you might not want to run X-Drive is X-Drive suck at climbing. Uh, given that your wheels are going in at 45 degree angles, they're not good climbers at all. So, so for like this year's game, pushback, I would not recommend an X-Drive simply because it's not going to be able to park anywhere near as well as a tank drive. This is just a standard C channel, so it's about half an inch. As you can see, when the drive base gets over, um, it still went over pretty decently well. And you also have to keep in mind that this guy has some low bars to the ground. So uh, even a tank drive wouldn't be able to drive over something just because that C-channel is so close to the ground. But even there, you can see it very much struggled to get up. And this is only half an inch tall, whereas the barriers are one inch tall, which is going to be relatively much higher. Um, and also just the way the pods are built, um, you're going to have a much harder time getting tall clearance. Like you could do things like flip those nuts around, um, but you're still going to have a hard time getting clearance unless you ran like four inch wheels. But that's also going to lead to like some center of gravity issues. As with most standard drive bases, you do want to make sure that the left and right half sides of your robot are balanced. Because as you can see here, when I add a bunch of weight to one side of the robot, it's not going to drive straight. And it is probably a little bit more susceptible to uneven weight distribution than a tank drive would be. The other thing that's important to consider with your X-Drive is your front back weight balance. This isn't really something that teams really think about much for a tank drive, as long as just making sure that you're not going to like tip over. You can see um, forwards backwards driving is still pretty straight right there. However, if I go ahead and put this toolbox at like the back of the robot, then when I go to strafe, you're gonna notice it's not gonna go straight. You can see it's kind of like arcing around, um, like if the center of the circle was like way over there. Um, so you can see it kind of like rotated itself in an arc like that. And the more uneven your weight distribution is, the more relevant you're gonna see that. And and it is, of course, nice, especially when you're programming, um, for the sideways movements to just go sideways and to not turn your robot around at all, um, as that's kind of critical for lining stuff up. And you can, of course, counter it as if you're swaying this way, you could just give a little bit more power to those motors or a bit less to those ones. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's just you want to try and balance out your robot's weight as best as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you learned lots about X drives. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and I will see you in the next one.